So there was a marquee basketball game that took place yesterday. Number one, Gonzaga. Number two, UCLA. The top two teams in the nation in college basketball. The highly anticipated rematch of last year's epic Final Four matchup, the national semifinal. The Zags ended up prevailing on a Jalen Suggs overtime winning buzzer beater three for about 40 feet out to propel Gonzaga to the national title game. And so we had this matchup between Gonzaga and UCLA. UCLA had retained their entire team intact. Gonzaga lost Corey Kispert, Joel Iai, and and Jalen Suggs, three guys that were drafted in the NBA draft last year. And obviously heading into this matchup, both teams had collected top five wins. So it was understandable that there was all this this built-up hype surrounding this game. UCLA had knocked off Villanova, who was ranked in the top five. Gonzaga had demolished Texas, a team that was ranked in the top five. So this game was played in Vegas, the Sam Empire Classic, the good Sam uh, Empire Classic. And this was just the fifth time ever where the two teams that met in the national semifinal from a season ago were meeting the following year as a number one and number two team. So Cincinnati and Cal, that happened in 1960. Ohio State and Cincinnati in 1962. Houston and UCLA did it like for two years in 67 and 68. Then we saw Virginia and North Carolina in 1982, and obviously these two teams this year. And this was the 43rd all-time matchup between a number one and a number two team. So the important thing is context, because entering this game, UCLA basketball hadn't entered this upper echelon in what feels like almost two decades. The last time that UCLA was this relevant, was this highly ranked at the start of the year, and then through the first couple of weeks, was during the Ben Howland days between the 2005-2006 season all the way through the 2007 to the 2008 season in which they made three straight trips to the Final Four. But outside of that, they'd kind of been irrelevant for the last several years. Alford, Coach Alford really didn't do much to, to advance this program. They kind of plateaued a couple of trips to the Sweet 16, couple NCAA tournament trips, but that wasn't enough. And last night, I understand what the final score was and how lopsided it ended up being, but really the game was defined in the first half because in the first half, one team shot it particularly well, Gonzaga, they couldn't miss. And for for a team, they shot 39% from three and juxtapose UCLA who couldn't buy a a, a bucket in the first half. This was a UCLA team that literally they missed 11 of their first 12 layups, layups in the first half. And they shot two for 12 from the three-point line in the entire night. So UCLA was missing every single thing they could. Again, this isn't this wasn't the, the John Wooden era where they were the favorite team. Obviously, Gonzaga still the odds-on favorite to win the NCAA title this year. But the problem was UCLA missed 25 of their first 31 shots. Well, when you play against a Gonzaga team like that, you're not going to come back and win the game. The second half was obviously a lot more competitive, but this is the point that I want to hammer down is it's not all, it wasn't all about the Gonzaga defense. It was a mindset. It was an effort because Gonzaga looked like the team that had the chip on the shoulder. Gonzaga looked like the team that were seeking vengeance that had, that had just, mean intentions entering this contest. UCLA was the team that lost in the final four last year. Gonzaga was playing like the team that had suffered that heartbreaking defeat. Now that wasn't the other way around yesterday. And so it was effort. UCLA was taking a bunch of contested shots, but it wasn't all Gonzaga's defense. A lot of the shots they just simply missed. Now I will say this, that kid Chet Holmgren, he is a monster. Seven foot freshman for Gonzaga. This guy is, is legitimate. He's the real deal. A legit seven footer who's got a handle, dribbles the ball up the floor, can shoot the three at 15 points on, on two for four shooting from three. He had four block shots. He's extremely lanky. He's bony, kind of a gangly guy, but hey, 
He needs to pack about, yeah, another 50 pounds probably. I think I weigh more than him. But the guy's got a tremendous skill set, tremendous touch around the rim. He affects the game in multiple ways. He can deflect shots to contest shots. So he was a presence inside. Drew Timmy and uh, and Nemhart. Nemhart went off for 24 points. He's a good-looking player. I kind of like his dribbling handle. Obviously, Timmy has been there. He's one of the preseason national player of the year candidates. He had 19 points last night. And so I don't want to discredit what those guys did because they backed up that number one ranking. They looked like a legitimate number one overall team this year. And so Gonzaga is the real deal. They are a legitimate good team. But I don't think that the score, the final score, is indicative of the gap between these two programs. I really don't because I think UCLA has just as much talent. They've got more experience, arguably. Even the fact that their entire roster is coming back. Now, obviously, a big absence yesterday was Cody Riley. He wasn't playing. He had 14 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists in that Final Four game. And he was the guy predominantly guarding Drew Timmy in that national semifinal. He wasn't there yesterday. So they didn't have a big presence inside, which was the problem for UCLA. And unfortunately, it showed because a lot of the shots were altered. By the Zags defense, they were they were menacing on the perimeter. But again, a lot of looks that easily could have gone down if you're UCLA. One for 11 on layups in the first half. I mean, Hawkes ended up finishing with 19 points, but he was inefficient to do so. Juzang didn't take over the same way we're accustomed to seeing. Jules Bernard missed every single shot that he took. Tiger Campbell played inexplicably careless basketball which you don't see from him too often and so this was a statement win for Gonzaga again I'm not too worried about UCLA obviously this was a marquee earlier early season regular season matchup so you want it's about pride for your program it's about looking at the barometer and a measuring stick for your stuff for yourself as a team and this perhaps could be a flashpoint in the season for UCLA going back so I'm not too worried about this team in the depth. They're going to get Cody Riley back. This team's going to find itself. And again, it doesn't mean that they're not worthy of the number two spot in the standings. It just means Gonzaga is a legitimate number one overall team. And that's what it means. And they're really good. Mark Few deserves to be a Hall of Fame coach. He's a great coach. And to be honest, it's impressive how in the Northwest now, he's done a nice job of actually attracting recruits. It's the it's the best recruit that they've ever had in the program. And they got this kid, and he's a fantastic player. So it was, unfortunately, right from opening tip, really wasn't that entertaining. Gonzaga kind of blew the doors off of him right from the jump, led 29-8 to eight right from the get-go. And the second half, it stayed a 20-point game, so it was a lot more competitive, probably a little bit more reflective of what – of how a game would have seesawed just like it did in the fi- in the in the final four. But it's a shame that it had to come yesterday. I would have loved to have seen a better performance out of UCLA. But again, Gonzaga's a legitimate team. And that performance yesterday showed the depth of this roster. And they wanted it more. They flat out wanted the win more and it and it showed. And it showed.